Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this lecture on surface and answer drama spectroscopy. I'm Pietro Gucciardi from the National Council of Research of Italy, Institute for Chemical Physical Processing in Messina. In the first part of the lecture, we will discuss about the phenomenology of SIRS and about the basic enhancement mechanisms, and we will focus our attention on the electromagnetic enhancement process that provides the largest amplification. Then we will see some other application examples. As we have seen in the lecture on the Raman scattering, the intensity of the Raman scattered radiation is proportional to the number of scatterers, to the Raman scattering cross section, and of course to excitation intensity. One of the basic drawbacks of Raman spectroscopy is the extremely low cross sections. You see here, for molecules like benzene, toluene, or dichloromethane, we are in the order of 10 to the minus 30 centimeters square over radians. This has to be compared to the fluorescence cross section. That is, as you see here, of the order of 10 to the minus 16 centimeters squared for some uh, typical fluorophores. So there is, there are 14 order of magnitude of difference, and this makes it uh, impossible to see individual uh, molecules by Raman scattering, while it's common practice to observe the fluorescence of single molecules nowadays. Surface Enhanced Raman Spectroscopy, or SIRS in brief, is a surface assisted spectroscopy technique in which the Raman signal is highly amplified by the surface molecule interactions. Molecules, before being analyzed, are absorbed on nanoparticles, in particular metal nanoparticles are very effective, and this provides a boost to the signal. The boost is mainly linked to two factors, an electromagnetic factor and a chemical factor, and as we see here in this table. The chemical effect is partly due to the atomic scale roughness and partly to the charge transfer resonance effects. And this provides signal boost of a factor going from 100 to 10 to the 4. Much higher boost is provided by the electromagnetic enhancement. The electromagnetic enhancement is due to the field amplification that we have seen in the lecture on plasmonics and uh, typically provides amplification factors, av average amplification factors of the order 10 to the 8, but in single hot spot, the single hot spot metal nanoparticle, this um, enhancement can ramp up to 10 to the 10. In this picture here, we see a Raman spectrum of methylene blue deposited on a flat gold field here, and the signal is already amplified by a factor 100, and the, the enormous boost to the signal is shown here. This is the same molecules deposited at the same concentration on some nano antennas, metal nanoparticles, and you see here there are basically five orders of magnitude of gain. Certain substrates consist of metal nanoparticles deposited on some surfaces. Here we see the example of gold nanoparticles deposited on PDMS surfaces that are useful for lab on chip architectures. When we, deposit, when we absorb on these substrates metal and blue, we see this kind of cell spectrum. You see here the intensity to be compared to the same uh, signal when metal and blue is absorbed on flat gold films. So the effect of the roughness and the effect of the localized surface plasmons is visible in this kind of amplification of the order of 10 to the third. In order to accomplish SERS detection, there are two basic different configurations that I used. The first is to use uh, metal colloids already deposited and uh, di dispersed in liquid, to which we add some analytes, and then we typically have the binding between the analyte and the nanoparticle, then some drops are taken, put on a surface, dried and uh, detected by typical uh, Normal, uh, Raman spectrometers. This can be tabletop or even handheld spectrometers. Another typical architecture is as the one as we have seen in the previous slide, in which the metal nanoparticles are deposited on a surface. The surface with the metal nanoparticles is then immersed in a solution containing the analyte. The analyte binds to the metal nanoparticles at the surface, and after washing and drying, SERS detection is made conventionally with the two experimental setups described above. 
The quantification of the signal amplification can be performed using two quantities. The first one is the so-called source gain, that is the ratio between the source and the Raman signal, normalized to the power integration times, acquired on a source active substrate and on a reference surface. After both samples have been immersed in a solution containing the same concentration of target molecules. The reference sample that we typically use is a flat metallic surface of the same materials of the source active substrate. It means that if we want to compare the signal of golden antennas, as a reference we use a gold flat surface. So this G source, source gain, is defined by his, this formula here, where P is the intensity of the excitation light and T is the integration time. The information that we obtain using the source game quantifies the advantage of using a source affix substrate with respect to a flat metallic surface. So it's a parameter that at a glance gives you an idea of how much your antennas are amplifying the signal. There are several criticalities in using these parameters and the principle is the fact that it does not take into account the effective number of probed molecules. The second and mostly used parameter to quantify the source amplification is the, the so-called average source enhancement factor. That is the ratio between the source and the Raman signal, again normalized to power and integration time, acquired on a source active surface and on a reference sample normalized to the number of probed molecules in each case. The typical reference sample that we use when uh, calculating the average source enhancement factor is some Raman of a liquid solution containing the target molecule. So we compare the search signal to the, to the Raman made when the molecule is in liquid. In this case, the number of Raman, uh, the number of molecules probed by Raman is typically estimated as the product between the concentration and the volume of the probed, uh, the, and the probed volume. And this is typically, in a microscope experiment, this is typically the point spread function of the spot that we form in liquid using a microscope objective. The information that we gather with this parameter is the mean enhancement experienced by each molecule directly, and this is directly compared with theory. So the formula is this, where the source and the Raman signal are normalized to the number of more probed molecules in source and in Raman. While estimating the number uh, of probed molecules in Raman can be quite reliable, estimating the number of probed molecules in SERS can be more difficult. The calculation of NSERS is in fact made assuming uniform and monolayer coverage of the SERS active surface and estimating the size of the hotspot from the, the geometry of the sample. Then we divide this effective volume by the volume of a molecule and we calculate the number of molecules. Of course, since we do not know exactly the size of the hotspot and where the molecules are localized, this parameter suffers of large uncertainties. As we have seen in one of the previous slides, there are different contributions to the signal enhancement in SERS. The first, indeed most efficient, is the electromagnetic enhancement. Here, the field confinement enhancement at the surface of nanostructured materials generates some hotspots, points in which the field is highly amplified and the molecule deposited herein benefits of this amplification of the electromagnetic field. In principle, the source enhancement is independent of the molecule and only depends on the nanoparticle's optical properties. It is a long-range interaction, 1-10 nanometers. The second factor is the chemical enhancement. This is an enhancement of the polarizability of the molecule that is due to physico-chemical interaction with the substrate. There is an exchange of electrons and the generation of charge transfer states. It crucially depends on the electronic states of the molecule and of the nanoparticle as indeed it is a short range effect, few angstroms. Finally, we have the typical resonant Raman scattering in which if we are able to excite resonantly the molecule, we will benefit of an additional signal boost to, to the resonant Raman scattering effect. In the electromagnetic model of the SERS effect, also called E to the fourth model, both the incident field and the Raman field are amplified. To better understand this twofold enhancement effect, let us consider a molecule located at the hotspot of an antenna. Let's suppose that the molecule is excited with a field E0. Since the molecule is at the hotspot of the nanantenna, it will benefit of an enhancement local field. 
that will be somehow proportional to the incident field through a term that, if the non antenna is isotropic, will be a scalar or otherwise will be a tensor. This gamma excitation here. The intensity gain, the intensity gain that will benefit the non antenna will be equal to mx and will be the ratio between the local intensity, the, the intensity of the local of the amplifier enhanced local field and the intensity of the incident field. The molecule will then scatter some Raman photons. So we can consider an induced dipole, the induced Raman dipole, that will be proportional to the local field through the Raman polarizability tensor. Then there is a second re-radiation enhancement due to the fact that this dipole, or at least the field induced by this dipole, will interact itself with the non-antenna, inducing a non-antenna re-radiated re field. So the totally radiated field will be equal to the Raman dipole field plus the interaction of this field with the non-antenna, the re-radiated field. Therefore, we will have as an enhancement of the re-radiated uh, radiate, of the re-radiated photons that we can be calculated as the ratio between the intensity of the local field at the Raman wavelength here divided by the intensity of the field in absence of the non-antenna. This term hemrad here. The total gain, the total enhancement factor of the source will be the product of these two factors, the excitation enhancement factor and the radiation enhancement factor. Now, since typically the Raman photons have the same energy of the uh, photons of the incident field, these two terms are very close and we can say that this product can be approximated by the fourth power of the local enhancement. In conclusion, it says, we can say that the source is indeed a linear effect on the intensity of the excitation photon, of the excitation radiation, sorry, but the electromagnetic enhancement will be proportional to the fourth power of the local field enhancement. From this stems the origin of the A to the fourth, E to the fourth model. The electromagnetic enhancement in cells stems from the, local, from the excitation of localized surface plasmons in metal nanoparticles. As we have already seen in the lecture on plasmonics, if we have a metal nanoparticle of the electric constant epsilon immersed in a medium of the electric constant epsilon m, if we apply an a time varying electromagnetic field, we will have some local fields here at the so called hotspots that is proportional to the incident field by this term. This term can be made quite large since, using metals, we can find regions of the spectrum in which the dielectric constant of the metal is negative and in particular is, is almost equal to minus 2 epsilon m, epsilon m being the, the dielectric constant of the environment that is typically air or uh, water. If we excite this resonance, so if we select the correct wavelength in order to make the denominator small, we will end up with this field amplification at the edges of an individual metal nanoparticle. In SERS, using metal nanoparticles is fundamental because, as we have seen, there can be, there, there can be a strong field enhancement. This is the radiation enhancement calculated for a single nanosphere. What is important to observe is, however, that if we use a dimer instead of a single sphere, we will create a gap and the field enhancement gap will be much higher than the field enhancement at the hotspot of a single metallic sphere. Here we see that we can reach factors going from 10 to the 4 to 10 to the 5, where, 10 to the 6, sorry, whereas before we had just a factor of 100. We have experimentally observed the this enhancement by approaching two gold nanorods in presence of a dye molecule and monitoring the source gain as soon as we approach one nanorod to the other. What we observe is that passing from 200 nanometers to 15 nanometers of gap distance, we have an enhancement factor of factor 10. If we indeed are able to go to very small gaps, such as here, 2 nanometers, it has been experimentally demonstrated that this gain can ramp up up to factor larger than 10 to the third. 
The message is therefore that in search, in order to have best uh, sensitivity, instead of using single nanoparticles, it's a very good. It's a very good idea to assemble particles together in order to exploit these gap modes, in which the field is much more amplified than with respect to the spot of a single particle. Let us see now some application examples. SIRS offers two specific advantages. One is the possibility to have a stronger Raman signal. The second is the possibility to tailor the limit of detection to, val to values much smaller than in Raman. In this slide we have covered these nanocrescents, gold nanocrescents, that feature a strong plasmonic resonance in the visible near infrared with methyl and blue molecules and we see that on one side we have an amplification of the of the of the raman scattering of a factor 10 to the third thanks to SERS, and on the other side we can see that we can detect uh, methyl and blue down to concentration of one nanomolar this this is a typical experiment that is performed in SERS when we want to ascertain the minimum uh, limit the limit of detection of a molecule we decrease the concentration you see here we start from 10 to the fourth and go down to 10 to, to the 9 and 10 to the 9 we see the search signal of methyl and blue this peaks here but we start seeing of course the signal of polystyrene that is the substrate on which the nanocrescents have been grown for instance SERS offers extremely high molecular sensitivity in 1997 it has been shown by two different groups that it is possible to perform single molecule detection and further experiments in the, far, in the, in the subsequent year show us, have shown that it's possible to count the molecules 0, 1, 2, 3 it is possible as well to develop uh, optical fibers that are SERS active in this case we show here an optical fiber that has been thinned by chemical etching and then some gold nanoparticles, some silver nanoparticles have been deposited on the surface by means of APT APTMS. We see here that we can emerge the optical fiber in a solution, in this case it was a solution of Radamine 6G and remotely we can detect the signal of Radamine 6G, here we see the peaks of Radamine 6G when the, 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 gold, the, the silver nanoparticles are on the surface with respect to this strong background that is the background of the optical fiber in absence of silver nanoparticles. Gold nanantenna offer the possibility to make selective biosensors that exploit SERS. The idea is to coat the nanantenna with some bioreceptor that will selectively capture the proteins of interest and then by means of an excitation resonant with the nanantenna we are able to detect the enhanced vibrational fingerprint of the protein. An example is shown in this slide in which we have used uh, gold nanantennas made by dimers or by cylinders that have been used to make uh, selective sensor for MNSOD. MNSOD is a protein and is a biomarker of cancer pathologies. As we see here, we have first the nanantenna. The nanantenna has been analyzed by Raman, and so we see that we have a peak here that is the substrate, the CF2 the subs of the substrate on which the nanantennas are being grown, but in all this zone here the signal is basically flat. Then we deposit the, the bioreceptor, that in this case is a DNA aptamer, and then we start seeing the cells of the aptamers. Then we have to block the free surface in order to avoid unspecific binding to the nanantennas, and this is made by uh, the addition of 6-MHO. What is interesting to see is that when we had the 6-MHO, we have an increase of the background. Okay? So the background, the uniform background, increases. And this is to be subtracted later. This is a common pro a problem in SERS. When we have a measurement, we typically have a background that has to be subtracted after. So now the nanantenna is, is ready. It is immersed in the MNOCD solution. It captures the protein. And when it captures the protein, we see all these gray zones in which there are peaks that belong to the MNOCD. So the, the aptamers have been able to selectively capture the MNOCD that was indicated. Again, we see the appearance of a background 
we typically see an appearance of the background also in presence of biomolecules. This was detected at 10 to minus 7. And of course, the assignment of the peak is quite difficult because in SERS, and especially in SERS of biomolecules, the peaks can be shifted and the intensity ratio it can be very different from the native protein in solution. Finally, we have shown that it is possible to capture this MNSOD also in body fluid like serum and saliva. You see here, this is the black. Uh, the, 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 the signal of the non antennas plus D DNA when it is immersed in the saliva or in serum, we see the appearance of this band that is due to selective capture of MNSOD. SERS can be used to monitor chemical reactions. In the case shown here, we analyze the transformation of methylene blue into thionine after the position of methylene blue on metal nanoparticles called nano antennas. The reaction is characterized by a loss of the methyl group induced by light exposure resonant with electronic absorption of methylene blue. The methylation induces specific features in the cell spectra, in particular in the zones around 450 and 800 centimeter to minus 1. As shown here, methylene blue has vibrational peaks at 448 and 70, uh, 780 centimeters to minus 1 that are replaced by modes 479 and 815 centimeters to minus 1 in thionine. The spectrum of thion in this red one has been acquired after 440 seconds of light exposure. We can follow the chemical reaction by time result Rama spectroscopy, acquiring spectra every second. The density map reported here shows, as a function of time, the Raman intensity in false colors of the principal modes characterizing the demethylation process in the 1, 2, and 3 spectral regions. In particular, again, we see that at the beginning here, the mode that typical of methylene blue was much more intense of that of thionine, and this is totally inverted at the end. Already after a few tens of seconds, we see the mode of thionine prevalent with respect to the mode of uh, methylene blue, and the same is observed here in this specific region, while the mode at 1620 doesn't change very much between the two molecules. Of course, we can fit the peaks, calculate the intensity, and for example, report the ratio between the 479 and 448 mode to evidence and characterize the time scale on which the chemical reaction occurs. Here is here of, of the order of 10 seconds. Density maps are a tool very powerful to visualize SERS data and to correlate the intensity dynamics of different vibrational modes when some chemical reaction or when some spectroscopy induced molecular change is involved. In this slide you can find some of the most recent review papers on this argument.